Mulligan. I am Jason Burgos for SureDog.com, and I'm joined by the latest performer to make the transition from professional wrestling into mixed martial arts. She has built a reputation for herself under the aliases of Cobra Moon, Thunder Rosa, Serpentine, while competing for notable organizations like Lucha Underground, Ring of Honor, and Women of Wrestling during her career in professional wrestling. She will now make the leap into professional combat sports as a member of the Combate Americas roster, and on November 8th, in her hometown of San Antonio, Texas, and she is Melissa. Now, I, I meant to ask you, what's the right way to say your, say your last name? Cervantes? Cer how, do you, how do you say it? Cervantes. Cervantes. Melissa Cervantes. Melissa, thanks for giving me some time in the lead-up to this this pretty big moment in your athletic career coming up in about a week or so. Yes. Uh, well, thank you for having me here. Um you know, I have to put makeup on because I was looking not so fresh. <laughs> oh, God. I don't hear no, that yeah. one too much from the guys. They got to put the makeup on. <laughs> uh, so my hair is always messy. So this is my natural hair. But yes, um, I'm making a huge, huge step in my uh, athletic professional career. And it's going to be in less than two weeks. So I'm more than excited. Um um, anxious, um, everything on the spectrum. <laughs> How long has the idea of competing in MMA been a serious thought for you? Because in the, in the press release for your signing, it mentions you have been practicing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu since 2016. Are there, how long ha has this been a thought? And are there any other martial arts you have been studying aside from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in the time? Well, um, it was offered to me, um, I will say like the idea was running around like a year ago, uh, mm -hmm. but I was like, you know, uh, the day that was set, it was too close, and I was like, oh, I gotta be, I gotta be prepared. Right. And then when we decided to do it, it was like, it was gonna be great, right? So I think it, it we can, we can make it work, you know. So um, um, it's been, it's been a while, and I'm like, really, like I said, like, I'm really excited. Um, anything that I started doing, I started doing um along with my jiu-jitsu and a Brazilian top team, I tried some of the classes that they had there just to, like, you know, add to my repertoire uh, in wrestling. Everything that I was doing, it had to do with pro wrestling. So I was taking a striking class and uh, kickboxing, and then um, I didn't start I didn't start taking it super serious until I was like, okay, now I'm going to fight. Now I have to, like, learn and pay attention specifically because there's a lot of uh, techniques that yeah. you have to learn. How long have you, you know, just followed the sport of MMA? And, and are there any particular fighters that have inspired you that, you know, into making this pretty, you know, interesting transition? Well, uh, well the interesting part is uh, because of pro wrestling, I met a lot of uh, pro MMA hmm. fighters. Um, one of them was Tina uh, Big Blazer. Uh, she was uh, actually um, in the Indies before she signed to WWE. Right. I went with Josh Burns and I trained at. at at, in Namirata UFC, mm -hmm. and I was like, holy Jesus, this is so serious. <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember, and that was a couple years ago, um, and she was like, you should come more often, you know, and train, so um, I like to, like, just roll around with the guys there, um, so she was one of, like, the main ones that I, like, I knew, you know, that she, she uh, did the transition from uh, becoming an MMA fighter to becoming a pro wrestler. Um, then uh, I've been following now more women that are mostly, like, mostly, like, moms or like uh, uh alex grasso Garas she's yeah. so good um I follow her a lot i like her style and like i've seen a couple of uh, of the girls that she trains at combate mm -hmm. it's, uh, one her debut not long ago i think it was like a month ago and she did really well she won her fight and then another one unfortunately she got hurt during her fight that was in hidalgo texas that's when i i went and, and talked to mike W from Combate and um, she got hurt and she got she lost her TKO. She broke her ankle mm. and she was holding her ankle on full guard and I was just like, oh my god, she is so tough. <laughs> she didn't she didn't tap and I mean, but um, but yeah, I've been following up people like that. Um, I, I I'm really inspired by some of the stories that some of these women have. Like some of them started doing MMA because they were um abused by their partners mm. and other ones that were just trying to empower themselves. Right. Uh, um, uh, my friend, uh, a really good friend of mine, she started doing kick, uh, kickboxing, kickboxing in Muay Thai because of that reason. She was like, uh, I've used uh, Kera Meget. She's um, she has a uh, team bully Busters in um, in LA, 
and I was hearing her story and, and now she uh, she's empowering other women to for self defense mm. just to make sure that they, they know what they're getting themselves into when they go to college and stuff like that. So it's like it's uh we're creating a circle of um uh, women empowering women. Mm. So necessarily you weren't, like, say, watching it, like, four or five years ago. It's like once you became involved with martial arts and then, you know, met people from the industry. So it's a it's a more recent thing that you become familiar with the sport. Yes, yes. I mean, once you start submerging yourself into the sport, you have yeah. to know <laughs> what it is. You get some promotion, you know, not the, the main one, which is mm -hmm. UFC. And, and that you're learning about different people from different parts of the world and, uh, that's what makes it so much interesting and so much cooler, you know, because the the business itself is like so small, just like yeah. wrestling. Like, mm -hmm. There's everybody know each other, everybody know what school you're from, <laughs> you know, and just like really, really, really interesting. It seems like you know the professional wrestling industry is pretty strong, and money making opportunities are much better. It seems like than say a decade ago. Was this decision to go into MMA a, a money thing because you weren't making what you had hoped for wrestling? Was it more about wanting to try something new, or was it just to broaden your revenue opportunities and do both? To try something new, uh, to challenge myself to do something that everybody tells me that I'm crazy <laughs> and that I never, okay. I'm never gonna achieve it. So I think there's always like my, my goal. When people tell me no, that's when I'm like, oh, I'm going to do it now. So um, it's that uh, conscious, conscious decision that my husband and I mm. did was to join Combate. I mean, I know the risk that this sport has. And just like for wrestling, uh, you never know if you, you know, you get hit or you do like, something wrong and you can just hurt and, uh, and you won't be out for a little while. But um, I am very dedicated. I am... Like, I, you have no idea how this sport has changed my view on pro wrestling, about life, about pretty much everything and, and how you need to enjoy the moment and enjoy the pain, the sweat, the tears that come out of every single practice mm. because you never know if you're going to have it tomorrow. So you have to mm. enjoy every single little thing you from from what I've read, you know, you have not competed in amateur MMA. Now, why not test yourself there first before jumping into the professional ranks, which isn't uncommon. It happens often uh, against, you know, people that, you know, you're going to jump in against people that have much more experience because they maybe did amateurs as well. Or is it really a tougher for you or even say um, like Sexy Star when she signed with them when you have an established name, even from, say, another industry like professional wrestling, is it hard to turn down guaranteed money offers, you know, compared to, say, doing amateurs where you're going to fight for free? You know, you're going to get into a fight for free. Is it is it hard to, to do amateurs, Is it, you know, to turn down that money? Um, that's a great question. Um, now that I see my some of my friends doing amateurs and stuff, I'm like, man. Um, I mean, some of the girls, they go amateurs, all the amateurs that have six, seven ma matches, yeah. you know? So, it's, it, I mean, if you put it in perspective, it is the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, with a, a money on the side when you're going pro. Yeah. Um, but I am confident that, you know, with the training that I'm getting and, and in the future that I will become a really uh, proficient and really good MMA fighter. So you just have to be com uh, confident about your abilities. It's just like, you know, with wrestling, I was, you know, many patients belong to the Wolves and you just have to perform no matter what. So and, it, and everything goes with with your training. You know, if you have really strong basics and really strong fundamentals. Um, and, you know, I am very, very positive that it's going to be okay. <laughs> wrestling, I mean, and I'm a long-time pro, pro wrestling fan, long-time long MMA fan. They have interesting parallels in terms of the physicality, even the psychology. It's a different psychology, but it's a mental toughness you need. Um, training in MMA is super tough. You know, it, 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 more people get injured in the training than the fighting. Training for wrestling is super tough. More people seem to get injured, you know, with that as much as anything. And it's really hard. As a person that's now doing both, you know, you've done it. What would you say has been an, a harder learning curve for you? The MMA, the martial arts, the different aspects, or the, the different aspects of, of wrestling where, you know, the choreography of certain moves and trying not to hurt each other, what has been tougher? You know, I think everything comes with time. Um, with professional wrestling, the more seasoned you are, the better, I mean, sometimes, the better wrestling you are, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it is the same with MMA. I hmm. think that the more confident you get, the more um, you can uh, perform your technique and practice your technique, the better you will become as, as, as a professional 
athlete. And the more, you know, practice you have, which means more matches or more bouts, more fights, the better you become. I mean, it's the beauty of this sport is like there's a 50-50. No matter what, um, oh. if the other opponent can be, uh, you know, the champion, he can lose at any time just with a little tiny mistake. Yeah. You know, look at my credit. You know, Diaz took the, the, the fight in less than a month and mm -hmm. he came out on top, mm -hmm. you know, and all the odds were against McGregor. You know, so the same with uh, Ronda Rousey. Everybody was like hyping her up like she had five matches like on a roll. Yep. Then home comes in like, hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. Kick you in the face. You're done. Yeah. You know, so it's like it's a 50 50. So um, I, that's what this, this is why I love the sport because, you know, you train, you can train for years and years and years, months and months and months. And yep. it comes to, down to that last second and, if you turn your back and you give your back, that's it. That's it. If you, mm -hmm. you know, retract your hand and the other person gets you on the jaw, that's it. You know, so it, it's, it's all exciting. <laughs> the obvious next question is, how did this deal to come together with Combate specifically? You know, was it sudden? You know, was it something, the organization you have been talking about for a while? You mentioned you were thinking about this for the last year. A and were there any other organizations that were interested in your service as a, a fighter? Or it was always kind of a Combate thing from start to finish? Okay, yeah. I mean, I was in talks with, um, the, the talk was started with, um, Alberto del Rio, as you know, he's very involved in, mm -hmm. in Colombia for quite a bit now. And uh, we just started talking very nonchalant. And then I just started getting more curious and more curious. And it happened. Mm. Does this deal with Combate still allow you to take pro wrestling dates? You know, because I know Alberto still does it. Even though he's going to fight, he has all this, you know, executive stuff. Similar, you know, Jake Hager's doing it right now, Bellator, AW. You know, or are you all in just mixed martial arts for the time being? Um, well, when you're, when we're doing our fight camp, um, I'd rather do like take some time off from wrestling and mm -hmm. just focus, um, completely on, on my fight camp, mm -hmm. like, which is what I'm doing right now. Right. Um, but yeah, we, uh, I am allowed to wrestle. Uh, that's why I'm right now I'm wrestling pretty much full time with uh, national wrestling alliance with NWA. Jake Hager was doing something interesting that during his camp before the fight he had this weekend, he was having Wednesdays and Thursday were his off days, and that's when he was was uh, doing wrestling. Though he wasn't um, necessarily getting physical, you, you, would you do something like that? Maybe not get physical, but maybe take part, you know, in events on that kind of. Could you see yourself doing both? Or it's just too much work to try to do all that kind of stuff and the travel. You know, if. If it's local, I do my training in the morning, and then at night I just go and do like ring announcing or mostly ring announcing or something. <laughs> yeah. Like I mean, the beauty of uh, professional wrestling is there's there's so many roles that you can play without actually being yeah. physical. Right. I do ring announcing. I can do um, commentary. I can do um, let's see, managerial stuff, referee. Like I can do everything, and that's how that's what I like to do when I'm around here and and that's the option that i gave a lot of the promoters is like hey i'm still around you want to use me for anything I'm, I'm more than welcome to do anything like that so i don't have to like necessarily jump from the third rope to somebody <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 how much of an influence did the fact that the combate signed sexy star you know alberto has been a, a long a part of the organization like did it make more sense like when when alberto started suggesting the idea to go and start with them and be a part of it because they have this obvious clear relationship with professional wrestling even tito ortiz has done professional wrestling they, they have this clear relationship where they almost appreciate what wrestlers go through and they appreciate bringing them in and considering them a high level athlete as well they don't have to necessarily just be have a background on us did, did that make the transition and going there make just much more sense than say anywhere else um, I think so. I mean, I feel that Combate is looking to uh, have more uh, athletes to cross over to MMA, not only like pro wrestlers, but I think they're looking for other, um, is it other athletes from other, um, the other places. So uh, yes, so I talked to Sexy Star before I make the decision, and and she really, she really encouraged me to do it, and she encouraged me to try something different and to just. Uh, not be afraid of making a decision like this. Uh, she's definitely very fearless in many things that she's done in her career. <laughs> yes. Did and she I give you any that. tips? Like, you know, after, because she's already gone through the first fight, did she yeah. give you any specific preparation afterward tips? It, she just said to just go for it and to, like, listen to my coaches. And if anything I needed, I was she was there for me. And that means a lot. You know, that means a lot. 
Kamate is unique in the fact that it specifically caters to a Spanish-speaking, you know, combat sports market. How much did that factor into your decisions you're doing the promotion as well? Is there some pride in being a part of an organization yeah. like this? Absolutely. 1,000%. <laughs> all about, you know, supporting uh, the Hispanic community mm. in a way in where uh, we are ex not, not ex exclusive, but inclusive. Yeah. Um but I really like the fact that they are highlighting Hispanic athletes in where a lot of the big companies, you know, we kind of get uh, lost in the shuffle and um, and we don't get hi um, the highlight that we, we deserve because just, we're just as good as anybody else, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and I noticed that uh, in the last couple of months, Combate is like the number one show watched by, you know, the Latino community. Like yeah. they tune in at 12 o'clock at night to watch fights and I've when I go I have gone to different places to get my medicals and stuff I tell them well, who I'm gonna fight and they're like oh you're fighting for combate oh my god nice. I watched that show I love it you know yeah. so it's, it's really really cool for the folks that you know because you, you, you come from a pro wrestling background so you're used to have the idea of trying to sell you know your skills your talents for the folks that watch this talk to them about why you feel you are more than ready for this fight coming up why this is not some you know combate just trying to bring in a wrestler with a name draw interest from your background why they're not trying to do that why combate feels you are a legitimate prospect in the sport and you can win this fight on november 8th because of course people have their doubts about someone jumping into prof from professional wrestling into professional combat sports why tell them why in short you are a badass and you're about to kick somebody's ass on the eight <laughs> well, just to start like i think it takes one to get in the cage like that you know you yeah. have to have mentality and not everybody does i am a woman i'm a 33 year old woman i'm a professional athlete and mm -hmm. i dedicate my life to this sport right now it's incredible the time that i spend training, watching videos, studying, um, you don't, if, if you don't love it, you wouldn't be doing that. And I think uh, I did it with pro wrestling and I'm doing it not with MMA. I dedicate my life, my soul and my body to the sport, you know? So, um, I know people, uh, might have doubts, but no matter what happens on November 8th, I, I'm going to give my 1000% and everything I have. And what was that? Um, just my husband. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, like I said, there's a 50-50 chance yeah. to win. Always. Mm. Just keep that in mind. Do you feel that... I, I am so relentless. Do you feel that... I mean, because of the the, the, the the grappling background of, of like wrestling and the, the kind of, you know, the pulling, you know, those kind of those elements, does it make transitioning into things like you know regular amateur or greco wrestling or jujitsu or even judo does it make it easier for that transition into new, learning those things and picking those things up quickly or has striking been an easier pickup for you because some people just jump into certain things and they're natural they're fish you know in water what would you say has been the easiest thing for you to learn in these last few years and what has still been a huge learning curve tough fight sometimes I think um, it all depends on the person um, and how much time you spend on uh, doing the reps. I, yeah. I think rep, rep, reps is so important. If you're not doing your homework, if you're not doing your reps, I mean, that's going to take forever. Yeah. So um, I'm an athlete and um, I, you know, I, like I said, I, I focus when I'm in striking um, on my technique. That's very, very important. And always uh, working on it, you know, shadow boxing, um, doing extra, doing that extra little thing to like help get better like i said uh like you mentioned a lot of people are gonna have more experience than i i do but you know i have a lot of heart and, and i'm a warrior professional wrestlers joining mma is nothing new you know the, the relationship between the two industries is fairly close and even vice versa you know kazushi sakuraba was a pro wrestler before he became a legend in pride alberto del rio did uh, wrestling in japan the very early days of his his wrestling career you know just in the last decade or so you know dave batista bobby lashley cm punk brock lesnar sexy star jack swagger now you all made the jump into mma with you know varying levels of success what do you think it is about the nature of professional wrestlers that they have this innate desire to jump into one of the toughest combat sports in the world? You know, what? why is it that wrestlers aren't jumping into boxing or kickboxing? They jump into MMA. What do you think? Is there a connection? Is it the, the glamour of it? What do you think it is? Because you are doing it. 
it's it's the we're addicted to adrenaline we're addicted <laughs> to, to the unknown to the to the craziness i mean i can tell you i've jumped from like three stories down to 10 people wow and one in one second if somebody moves i could have been paralyzed yeah so just jumping in the cage is just like exponentially 10 times like more adrenaline <laughs> <laughs> yeah like you know Somebody's there just like trying to like take your head off. It's like, whoa, like this is this is for real. This is gonna happen. So I think it's like we are addicted to adrenaline and and some of us like like to like challenge ourselves in, in a different in a different way. And it feels like because like you said, you met Shayna Baszler, Josh Barnett, you know, you met these people just by chance. And it seems like MMA and wrestling in turn are much more accepting of each other. Like you don't see boxers say, Oh yeah, you know, Brock Lesnar he needs to come into boxing. Do you think that's part of it too? Like the sports have blended so much and there is much more like, yeah, give it a shot. You see, you know, uh, MMA Cain Velasquez in WWE right now, you know, like there's just more of an openness from the fan base and the community. And that just makes it also a little bit easier too. I think I'm now um, with the, with some of the big, big names uh, on UFC and how UFC is so close with uh, WWE much easier for a lot of us to like jump into MMA because you know that people like uh, other people can promise on the other people you know yeah. and like hyping the matchup and then when it doesn't happen what they say they were gonna <laughs> do they're you know it's just like that like the, the, the anticipation like and the fact that they can sell more tickets because people are really hyped up about them uh, the bout I think that promoters are like um, pinpointing and highlighting on that and it was just like oh we can make more money doing this okay I think uh I think we should have this person. I think we should have this person. Let's invite this person over here. Mm. And now they're doing the same thing with um, let's see, with Kane and um, and uh, what's his name? I forgot. Brock Lesnar. Oh, Brock Lesnar. Yeah. It's 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 it, that's money. I mean, yeah. That was a real fight, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the championship away from from Brock Lesnar at UFC, you know, mm -hmm. in a very quick and. That can happen too in WWE. So you never know. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just if if you I mean if you didn't know the story of USC and and what happened like that it sparks your attention and vice versa. Mm. 